welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon. And I'm Angelica. And welcome to the show. It's the end of the year already. Can you believe it? I cannot. (laughs) No, I can't. No, I certainly can't either. Um, So it is time, as tradition dictates, to do our best of end of year episodes. And as always, we'll be starting with our favorite B-sides. But before we get into it, we have an extremely important and special announcement that we've been waiting to tell you guys about for so long. And it's finally here. So the podcast will be turning five years old in January, which is amazing. Um, And so to celebrate, we have been kindly asked by the amazing people at Moment to do a live stream global event, fancy birthday party live online to celebrate. So exciting. We are going to get to celebrate our fifth birthday in style. The Moment will have a lot of fun, like interactive um, pieces for the audience members. It will have segments of all your favorite episode types on Ask Me About K-Pop. Um, and it'll be a really good time. I'm so excited to be able to actually like in the moment celebrate with, with all of you. It'll be so nice to have you guys together sort of virtually in the same space. Yes. And we like, and to do the show live and it will be special. Like this is not a regular episode of the podcast. It will Mm -hmm. not come out regular in the feed. You have to come to the birthday party to see it. This will not be released as a regular episode. So you must get a ticket. So if you want to get tickets, they go on sale right now. The moment that this episode comes out, it is live and tickets are only $10 today. If you're listening to the episode or following our social media closely, announcement day, December 14th, $10 presale. So get in on it. Then tickets will go up to $15 after that. And $17.50 on the day of. So it's in your best interest to get your tickets now. You can get them at moment.co slash AMA K-pop for our birthday event. And if you are a Patreon, make sure to check. If you are a patron of our Patreon, make sure to check your messages because you get a special discount code because we love you for supporting us. So check that out. There is also some fun things. There will be an after party Mm -hmm. after the live show that you can get a separate ticket for. We'll just be um, buzzing from doing a live event and need to sit and have some wine. So if you want to, we're calling it like a fan meet. If you want to hang yes. with us at the after party. A little high touch. <laughs> It'll be very fun. Um, and we have a very, very, very exciting, super secret, special, special surprise. Super special. We can't say more about it now, but stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss it. Get your tickets. Uh, so again, this is January 19th at 6 p.m. PST, and we do understand that a lot of our listeners are on the other side of the ocean and that that will be the middle of the night for you. And we're very, very sorry about that. And if you want to stay up and hang with us, that's amazing and appreciated. But if you can't, the cool thing about this is that like an online K-pop concert, VOD is available for a week. So if you get a ticket and can't come to the live event, then you can watch it on your own time anytime after that for the next seven days. So we want you all to be a part of it. And we're so excited to celebrate. And it's just very, it's very exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. And we're so honored to have this opportunity. um, And we can't wait to share it with you. So get your tickets now moment.co slash AMA Kpop. Yay, birthday party. (laughs) We'll we'll be reminding you about it incessantly until then. um, But it's in your best interest to just get on it now. So yay, I'm so excited. All right, now that that's out of the way, (laughs) it's time to talk about best B-sides. And this is funny to me because I listened, I've been listening to our old end of year episodes this week to try to, you know, remember, get Mm -hmm. in the spirit of how we do this. And in the first year that we did awards, we picked a single B-side. Yes. And then the next year we were like, that's not enough. Let's do five. (laughs) The year after that, we said that's not enough. (laughs) And we did 10. And then last year, we couldn't cope and did 15. (laughs) This year, we have decided that 15 is fine. (laughs) 
<laughs> and we'll stick with 15. We don't need to make this we, any bigger. We can't, we can't do more than 15 because we only do 15 title tracks. Right. <laughs> so it's like we can't do more of the B-sides. But I honestly, like the my first of all, my very first pass of like, okay, what are all the B-sides I enjoyed this year? 72 <laughs> songs. <laughs> and then I had a list of 30 that I was like, this is impossible. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So as always, B-sides, we always start with it and it's literally always the most painful because the B-sides are like my babies that don't get their moment in the sun and I need them to have their time to shine. Um, So it was very difficult to pick as always. It was painful and it hurt me, but I'm happy with my choices. Good. (laughs) Me too. Me too. I'm very excited about this as always. I think we have a good, we have a good sampling of the stuff that we listened to this year and I always feel, I think I always feel the strongest about these songs and I'm most excited to share them with y'all in case you haven't heard them. Cause that's the beauty of B-sides is that you have to listen to the whole album yeah, to catch them. Yeah. And I, so it's always fun for this because I know we have a lot of like casual K-pop listeners who only catch the the title tracks or only watch the stuff on the music shows. So this is always like a great treat for us to be able to share like the gems, the hidden gems Mm -hmm. that in K-pop but I love seeing um, like the evolution of the B-sides that we've chosen sure. because our tastes in K-pop, I think, have really grown, mine especially. Um, and it was really funny when I was looking at my final list. I have five solo artists, okay, two of whom are boys, all right, and all the rest are girl groups. Yeah. And that is new. I know. That's new. <laughs> but this was a beautiful girl group year. And I think that will uh, be a theme for, for the all rest of, our, of these episodes. Yeah, absolutely. It will. Because there was so much good girl group music. And like we said at the end of last week's episode, we made a ladies only playlist that has that's like 20 hours long. Oh my and, God, it's insane. And it's great. Everything on it is great. And mm-hmm. so I, you know, just want to say that everybody put out so much great music this year. Yeah, and, which made uh, it even harder to choose our favorite B-sides. Absolutely. <laughs> but we did it. So we let's did it. get into it. We did it. Um, so in like when I was listening to old episodes in 2019, you had ranked your B-sides. Mm, and I think we stopped doing I that because never, that's ever, too painful. I never, ever, did that again. Yeah. <laughs> no, that hurt. So <laughs> mine are in alphabetical order by artist. And I think yours are in alphabetical order by title. No, mine are in chronological, chronological order Chronological order. Okay, okay. <laughs> I should have done that. Mine are just alphabetical because that was as much as I could as I could all of my (laughs) lists were chronological this year like every single even my 72 list or 72 song playlist is in chronological order of release it's just the only way that I could like process anything that happened this year (laughs) that makes sense that makes sense um but all right we're just gonna go back and forth and play you some of these songs and talk about why we love them and then you'll have 30 beautiful songs that maybe you've never heard of and you will enjoy them too so yay all right let's go I will start because I'm first on the document. Let's do it. And my first song in alphabetical order is entitled Brave, a song for Matilda by Billy. <laughs> So Billy was one of my like favorite discoveries of the year, I would say. Um, I think that the music that they make is so deeply interesting Mm -hmm. and it feels like it's kind of bringing K-pop into like a new era because I feel like Billy music is not as much like directly copying like a an existing like retro style or like Mm -hmm. I don't know it's hard to describe because it all feels very k-poppy in its arrangement but like the chords that they use are so yacht rocky and like the use of harmonies and weird digital effects and there's just so much interesting stuff happening in Billy songs and all of the titles are freaking wild. <laughs> like, I was so curious who the Matilda that this song is for. Is it for the fictional character Matilda from the book? No or idea. Or like a different Matilda? I don't know. But if there's interesting Billy lore that anybody knows, let me know. Because all of their song titles have like emojis in them. Yeah. And so many punctuations. And like, they're all wild. And I love it. 
But anyway, this song is so good. It's just so like funky and like the vocal runs are so good and it just like has oh it just has great vibes and the first time I heard it it reminded me of Love Song by NCT oh. and I looked it up and wouldn't you know it has the same writer uh, a so distinct there you go. style there you nice. go um, but yeah I love this song and it's great and it was hard to choose a Billy song but I chose this one I'm glad you had Billy on your list because I had to they were one of my last like eliminations mm. and it was it was sad yeah <laughs> it's always hard all right hit us with your first one my first one in order of release is Alien by Changmin <laughs> I absolutely love this song. This was on the top of my list, like from the beginning. It's one mm-hmm. of the first things that came out this year. And I really liked the EP entirely, but this song was my favorite from the first time I heard it because it goes through like four distinct movements yeah, in yeah, the yeah. song. And each one of the beats is very different, but it has a very sort of like Mamba is the wrong genre, I think, but it has this very like Latin, like sort yes, of salsa yes, yes. beat to the like way it makes me want to move my hips. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I love it. And his voice like plays with all the different parts in his range. And it's just such a lovely, like groovy song. It was something I never got tired of. And like to this day, like when I think of 2022, like this EP comes to mind mm-hmm. and this song is like the top of it for me. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yay. Great choice. All right, my next one in alphabetical order of group is called Kaka, and it is by Cherry Bullet. Um, I love Cherry Bullet. Last year, I put a bunch of Cherry Bullet all over my end of year awards because I feel like they're, I don't know, they're like a small girl group that doesn't get a ton of attention, but I think that they make really great, just like fun, joyful, melodic, like great girl Mm -hmm. group music. And this was no exception. Um, I thought it was interesting that one of the SF9s wrote the lyrics to this song, and this is the only credit on his whole discography that Hmm. isn't an SF9 song. Like, this is the only thing he's ever written for anybody else. Are they the same company, do you know? I meant to look that up, but Mm. I don't know. Maybe? Maybe maybe he wrote it for one of the members. Maybe, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, this song, it just makes me want to jump around. It's just so, like, joyful. It feels like uh, the end of the music video where everyone's, like, jumping on the bed. It's like, that's the whole song. And, like, it's just so fun. And every time I hear it, I just feel happy i love that good choice (laughs) thank you i also really enjoyed cherry bullet this year and we'll talk more about them in a bit (laughs) my next choice in chronological order is hush hush from promise nine oh my hush hush oh my hush hush this was off of the Midnight Guest album that they put out with DM as the title track. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. is such an excellent song. So good. The whole album is really, really good. I think initially I had like three songs off of it on my list and <laughs> yeah. I had to narrow it down. <laughs> and I honestly couldn't really tell you like why I chose this one as opposed to the other Any two of the that others, I had. Sure. <laughs> because they're all beautiful and like they're all kind of like this sort of... I mean, DM is very energetic, but this had like, like the B-sides had sort of a lower key like vibe Mm -hmm, to them, mm -hmm. but they're all so like groovy and they have those beautiful like princess disco elements without being like a super grand production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And it was just, this is a really beautiful album and I love this song. I love the little like hush hush and they <laughs> only really say it at the beginning but then like i don't know the way that it just kind of like ding 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 ding, ding, ding like keeps yeah, going yeah, in yeah, it yeah, and yeah. I, ugh, it's so fun and groovy i love it i like the da na 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 yeah like there's it's good <laughs> I I didn't get any Promise Nine on this list. So again, we really worked. I think we really like unconsciously worked together yes. to make sure that everybody would be represented. Yeah, we really did. <laughs> and like I had to double check when I was finally making my like final choices. I was like, I need to know that you have this group and this group and this group <laughs> on your list because I'm about to chop them. And if you don't have them, then I have to reevaluate everything. everything. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so one of those is my next one, yes. which is Lovin' Me by 5050. <laughs> So this is probably one of the newest, if not the most recent song on these lists, because it's only like four weeks old. Mm -hmm. Um, So they're brand new, but this album really grabbed me and I thought it was wonderful. Um, the I looked up who wrote this song and the writers are Swedish, but they have no other melon credits. So mm. like, I hope they stay in K-pop because I think this sound yeah. is excellent. I talked about it so much last year with the Oh My Girl album, but like more vocoder in K-pop. It's <laughs> great. It's fun. It's more pleasant than autotune. I like how it sounds. Yeah. I know a lot of girl groups this year used it. It was like a nice popular trend. Um, I loved this album too. And there's something about the like tone of the singer's voice like especially in that line where she's like oops I did it again or whatever Mm -hmm. lost it again or whatever the line is like her voice reminds me of something or someone that feels like a core memory that I can't put my finger on there's I'm like why do I know you in my soul right I know there's I just there's something so like fucking epic about this song that is really indescribable and the only thing that it makes me think of is that like indescribable feeling of being like in fourth grade and being in the back of your mom's car and some song comes on the radio and you like stare out the window and, and like think about how you're main the main character, character life. life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This song like gives me those feelings in a way I can't describe. Yeah, that must be it. That must be it. And I just thought it was so great. So late edition, but really, really happy to have it. I love it. Great choice. I, I, oh, so it hurt me. It hurt me to cut 50 50. It hurt. But my next choice is 24 7 from Stacy. chose a clip from like closer to the end of the song because I love the voices of Stacy. They're such such beautiful, powerful singers. Amazing. It's crazy. Like I, I want love... to know who trained them. Yes. They're... Oh my god. And like maybe take Great. some lessons with them because they're fantastic. <laughs> like they're they're just the tone of their voice and like the clarity of it is so stunning to me that I love and they do this in all kinds of songs and there's like other songs of theirs that I think maybe even show this off better where they get into like incredible riffs and like mm-hmm. ad lib offs and stuff um, and this song is a little bit more like low energy than some of their other B songs but I just think it's really beautiful and like it was so catchy I had a lot of really favorite songs but one of my other like I went back and forth between 24-7 and same same off of this mm. album because same same I think is a perfect song. Yes, but to me I ultimately picked twenty four seven because I thought when I first heard same same that it sounded like a song that was originally written for Red Velvet. Right, like right, I could right. hear Red Velvet singing it, and this and Stacy has like a very distinct style of music that does not make me think of other people. So I ultimately chose this one because it just sounds like a Stacy song. Um, and I love it. I love Stacy. They're great. They are great. They are great. I'll I'll get to my Stacy later because mine's alphabetical order. But it was so hard <laughs> to choose one. It was so hard to choose one. Um, so my next one is Kama by Monster X's Kihyun. <laughs> This was a new, this was a no question mm. for me. This was one of the first ones that went onto the list. I can't even tell you how obsessed with this song I am. This first Kihyun release from the year he did two, but this one was only three songs, and like this was the standout to me, like hands down. I can't believe it wasn't the main single. I can't believe he <laughs> didn't do it at the concert. Like this is the song. I know. And everyone at the concert, too, was like, sing, come on. And then he didn't. And he didn't. Um, but he wrote the lyrics to this song. And I also thought it was very interesting is that one of the writers 
on this song wrote Siesta by Vivi's, which oh. almost made it onto my list. And the other writer wrote Chen's I Don't Even Mind, which also almost made it onto wow. this list. So you like those guys. I clearly <laughs> like them. I, that's why I wanted to look into the writers. I was like, I need to see if there's patterns here. Mm-hmm. And there were patterns. That's so funny. But the way that this chorus kicks in is just like what music is about man like i don't know <laughs> it just like it's so like driving and there's something so like early 90s adult contemporary like Mm -hmm. man singer vibe about it that I just really love and his voice is fucking unreal and I think this song really like showcases it and I just love it so much it's such a good like turn it up and like like drive kind of song absolutely I love it my next choice in order of release is Red Balloon by Rocket Punch This song has a Korean title, which is Dum Dum, um, but the like Korean word Dum, not like the English word. Oh, really? It just dumb. says Dum Dum um, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Hangul. Okay. Yes. Uh, but this is, I had five Rocket oh, Punch songs boy. on my initial list, and most of them were off of this album. I, this is the album that Chiquita was the lead title okay, off okay. of, which I didn't love Chiquita, but all the rest of the songs were so good. Um, and Rocket Punch, I think, is a group that like is definitely a style of music I didn't used to really like because they do have like smaller voices, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but their music is really groovy and like it has a I don't know. There's like something about the way that it moves that I can't, I can't resist it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just love it. Like all of the rocket punch songs, they came out with two releases this year. One was an album and one was an EP or like a mini single or something. Um, and I loved all of them, like all 10 songs or whatever that they came <laughs> out with this year. I was obsessed with them all. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. Rocket Punch is like a newer group that I have recently become really into. But this year they were one of my favorites. Yeah. Great choice. Great choice. My next one is called Blue Flame and it is by La Seraphim. <laughs> So this was on their debut album, Fearless, and it's just literally perfect disco and the bass is so funky, Ooh, funky, so funky, funky. And it's like most of the instrumentation is just that like bass freaking going and a little like jingly, mm-hmm. like clap in a tiny horn like synth. But like it's so simple and it's just a booty. It's like an undeniable booty shaker mm-hmm. that you can't resist. And every time it came on, I was just like, yes, yeah. this one. Yeah, and this one has a quality that I heard in like a couple different songs that sort of, it doesn't, nec- it's not a sound alike, but it's like a similar vibe to like the instrumentation. Do you remember that song American Boy by Estelle, of I think? Of course, and yeah. Kanye West. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. And that had like a real like, Mm-hmm. and sort of that like muted synth or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. and I feel like there were a couple like that it's like a muted disco I guess of like a, we're not going like full princess and we're not going like full discotheque either but we're almost doing like like an early tooth or like a mid 2000s disco mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm. and I love it I love that sound my next song sounds Nothing like that, though. <laughs> and it is Hiccups by Cherry Bullet. This is off of the same album that your Cherry Bullet check, yes. uh, pick was from. 
And I, the first time I heard this song, I, this was another one that I was like, this has to go on the list. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear this album when it first came out, but I heard it off of our like big ladies playlist. And I literally stopped what I was doing and like (laughs) ran to the computer to see what this was because I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, I have never heard a like 50s do rock and rock K-pop classic song. rock and yeah, roll yeah like the little like <laughs> like the like shoe wop shoe wops and the little like ay 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 are so i love them yeah. i love them so <laughs> much and i think this is one of the strangest k-pop songs i've ever heard in the best way yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was just like it, none of the like the rest of the album doesn't necessarily sound like this like all the tracks have kind of a bit of variety in them but I freaking love this song like I don't know <laughs> who wrote it or what they were smoking when they did but do more of it <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. I love it I love something different and like yeah it's very fun it's very very fun all right my next choice is simply titled lowercase i and it is by lightsome yeah, you got me falling and falling and dipping your flame me up in the top So I looked into who wrote this song and the production team who did it has written most of Itzy's songs. Oh, okay. Interesting. So like very different sound though. Yes. But I do just feel like there is a real, there's a real classic k pop K K-pop-ness mm-hmm, about totally. this song in the like way that it moves through all of its movements and the like sounds and stuff. But there is just something... There's just something like addicting about it and it makes me want to shake my booty and it like always caught my attention every time it came up Mm -hmm. on the massive ladies playlist. Um, This was one where I was trying to choose like my last three Mm. of the 15 and this was like in that and I listened to like the five I couldn't and this eked out Yeah, for an uh, for a quality I can't quite find the words for but it it needed to be on there. I'm glad that you put it on. I also had a light sun, a different light sun song. Um, and I, I, it was one of the last, one of the last cuts I made. Yeah. My next pick, uh, is from my only other boy. And <laughs> this is on the way by Onu. This was off of his release called Dice, which came out uh, at the beginning of this year. And it the whole album was really nice. Um, but this song in particular was one of my favorites. It's just like something that as I was listening through like all of my playlists before I had made my final 15, I just kept coming back to it. There's something, it's so groovy and his voice is so soft. I love the sort of like cottony, like gauzy, tone or like Mm, mm, color mm. he has on his voice you know what I mean yes Onu sings and it sounds like he's his vocal cords have like a filter on them I don't know yeah there's like a warm like fuzziness to it and I just love the sound of his voice and this uh plays with his voice kind of similar to how Alien like Changmin has such a great range that he's able to go like high and low in it and this song does the same thing like Onu sings in like his chest and then like up in his falsetto and it's just it's beautiful and it's like such a a lot of my songs this year were like not super energetic and a little Mm -hmm. bit more like laid back like low-key energy and um i loved this one it's so soft and warm and nice yay good (laughs) choice good choice all right my next one is called burning up and it features rehab and it is by monstax Uh, so this song is a Hyungwon song. He wrote this song nice. for Monsta X, which is very fun. And I, I mean, I just like love this song. I think the vibe of it is so great. It was my favorite song off of this album, title track included. Mm-hmm. Like this was my favorite. And I just love 
I'm so proud and I just love that in the absence of losing Wanho from the group and having Shonu away at the military, that the rap line has really stepped up to be vocalists yes. in Monster X. Yes, they have. And they both have such beautiful colors to their voices yes. that it's really, it's lovely. So I love the way that Honey just like belts this chorus, like to start it out and then Kihyun comes in to finish it. And like the synths in the background are like so wild and like fake organy and they sound mm-hmm. like phantom of the opera or oh my like God, they're manheim going bananas steel, manheim steamroller or like one of those like 80s synth yeah. bands and like i don't know the vibes of the song are just really good and they make me want to party and um yeah i just have a specific memory of being at the beach at the beach with my nieces earlier this year and this song was stuck in my head the whole time <laughs> so like yeah i don't know this was just a big part of my year and i had to find a way to get some monster x on here some where they didn't release much this year and i didn't love a lot of it but i loved this song nice. so i had to get it on there i love it my next pick in chronological order of release is natural by pixie it's okay not to be okay it's natural isn't that inside of me i need make a this is off of Pixie's album Reborn, um, which they like name check in that little clip that I just, mm-hmm. it, they do it actually in the whole chorus or in every chorus. Um, and I really liked this album. This is the album that Villain was off of, which mm-hmm. I loved. Um, and there were, I had a couple of B sides, but I ultimately picked this one because the main line in the chorus of it's okay not to be okay, it's natural is perfect and i i'm just like yes absolutely (laughs) it's lovely it's such a good like mantra to have and like yesterday when i had a terrible morning and i like finally like hours later when i like cooled off and wasn't mad anymore i was just like singing that over and over like it's okay not to be okay is natural and like i love it i love it and this song is mostly if not entirely in english i didn't look up the lyrics but it sounds like it's almost entirely in english if it isn't um and I love it. I just think it's so groovy and like Pixie makes really unique K-pop music that I think does not sound like a lot of the other girl groups that are out right now. Um, and I really, really like them. They have like a dark grooviness to them mm-hmm. that isn't like a scary, gritty groovy, but just sort of a little bit it's not joyful. Right. Like it's, it's not happy. It's, moody. it's yes. It's moody. That's a good word. Moody, groovy music. And I love it. I mean, I have, I have a picture that I'll get to in my list, but like, I just think that it's interesting because I remember when they debuted last year, somewhere around, somewhere around then that their first album had like that. I, all of the songs on their first album had parts of them that were very good Mm -hmm. and then the other parts of the song were like bad Mm -hmm. like there was a thing about Pixie's first album where I was like I want to like this but then you get to a part of the song and then I have to skip it yeah yeah, and I think that they have with this villain album sort of they're they seem to be shaping the sound totally in a more cohesive yeah and I think that this this is their third mini album and it's called reborn and I do think it truly was a rebirth for them of like okay the first two albums like didn't really click with a lot of people so what are we going to do to kind of change or or evolve or fully conceptualize our sound and the whatever they decided in that concept meeting or whatever was a right choice and I hope that they stick with it because mm-hmm. I really really like this direction of Pixie totally agree totally agree all right my next song is called Galaxy and it is by Newest <laughs> So this was on Newest's final album that came out this year, and this was one of the only original songs mm-hmm. besides the uh, title. title track, and the rest were remastered old Newest songs because it was a final, final. album package. But I just love this. I think it's perfect, Bumzu. It's just it's just a Bumzu song. Yeah. Like, 
He's groovy as fuck. And he, like, I don't know. He just knows how to write them. And it feels familiar in that, like, it's not a 17 song, but it's a Bumzu song. Mm-hmm. And, like, his color is it's on a all of song. it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it, like, this song, every time it comes on, like, it goes so many different places that every time I'm always like, ah, oh, yeah, man. Like, yeah. you really did that. It catches you it again. It just catches me again every single time. Um, and I really liked it. And I wanted to include Newest somewhere because... Yeah, doing the deep dive on them and like them being kind of sad about having to be disbanded. And uh, I just wanted to give Newest a moment in the sun in their, you know, last year as Newest. But I know that most of them have already like done their solo debuts and they're getting back out there and it's going to be okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I I liked, I really liked this album. And weirdly enough, like if I went by most played, I think that old newest song oh which one is it hold on i have to check because there was a like older song that was from the remaster that i listened to so many times but it's like five years old so it couldn't be (laughs) on any of my lists which one is it which one is it oh overcome Mm. that song is fucking crazy yeah i also listen to love paint like i don't know i listened to so many old newest songs because the album was new it was i mean it was like it was new absolutely (laughs) My next pick in order of release is Pale Blue Dot by Luna. I chose a clip again from sort of the end of the song because I really love the way that this song builds. It's definitely another track that I think like a couple years ago, I would not have enjoyed because of the like tiny little voices that Luna Mm -hmm. has. Um, But it has a similar quality to a lot of the other girl group music I really liked this year, which was that sort of like, this one I don't think uses vocoder in it, but it it kind of sounds like a song that could have vocoder in it. Um, And it starts off like much softer than the end because it like gradually builds and then it gets really grand and all the pieces that have been throughout the song start to like layer in together and it becomes really grand um in a way that like when I had everything on shuffle I kept coming back to this song so Mm -hmm. I was like something about this or it would like get stuck in my head there's just something very beautiful about it that and I didn't look up the lyrics but based on the fact that it's called pale blue dot and there's something at the beginning about like your troubles like leaving your troubles behind or whatever and it it makes me think it's about you know like the earth and we're just like dust how, in the universe yeah, exactly and it's like all... in the grand scheme of things it doesn't matter and there's something about the beauty of the song that like lends itself to the beauty of that sentiment and that idea of like actually it's very calming to know how insignificant we are mm-hmm. and that is like a core philosophy of mine. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, I, something about this song really resonated with me and I, I wanted it to be on the list. I'm really glad that you got a Luna on here. I had to cut one of my Luna songs from this same album. Um, yeah, but this I'm, is off of their flip that. Album. I'm glad that it's on here so that Luna could be represented, represented. And also I am fully in support of the boycott. I hope y'all pull it off. I think it yes, would be. Yes, support Luna. Don't cross the picket Don't line. Don't cross the picket <laughs> line. Um, okay, my next song is my Pixie song, and it is called Greetings. So this is definitely another one of those uh, keep going. It's all going to be okay Mm -hmm. songs. And I know that it like kind of just sounds like Christian music or something (laughs) at first. But the way that that chorus comes in. How you doing, man? like I, I fucking fall to my knees it's so there is something about it that is just I like fall to my knees oh my god and pray it's like there's something about it that is just like oh my god i don't know why that line hits like so hard but every time it does i'm like wow this is fucking beautiful and it has a key change and I love a key change. We didn't mention it in the Kara episode, but most Kara songs had yeah. a fucking key change. And I just, I love when that can happen because it just makes everything so Brings grand. Everything up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, ooh, we're switching gears now. 
Yeah. And yeah. I don't know what it was about this song, but it just like, it really, really gets me. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I think I just like a song saying, how you doing? Like, yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> like, that's just fun too. Yeah. There was a, there were like a couple of songs that I had on my list that were just like a, Hey, it's hard right now. Right. <laughs> But it'll be okay. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, in the 50-50 song, yeah. there's, the ta- there's the tape part where they're like, it's not so fun right now, huh? Call me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I will. Oh, all right. Well, so another sort of like, it's okay, <laughs> moving on song. My next choice is Over You by Hyolin. Over you, over you, yeah. had to have a heel and song on here because I loved this whole album of hers and she's one of my favorites. Um, and so I put this one was, I think my favorite song off of the album. And it's kind agree. of like, yeah, it's kind of sort of like, I don't know, Hyolin, I love her so much, but like, she's my sort of like more basic top 40 pop sounds, Absolutely, I guess. Sure. And like, I don't care. I need some basic bitch moments. Like, not that Yolen's basic. I love her. She's a queen. But, like, you know, she makes, like, very standard girl pop music. And this song is, like, not that different from, like, Bebe or CC. Yeah, or, yeah, like, yeah. it's kind of, it's got that same vibe it, the of sound other that stuff she, that, yeah, that she yeah, yeah, has yeah. made for sure um but i really love i love the like groove of this song i the like little like oh me you oh me you yeah oh me you like i always have like there's like a sometimes i listen to a song and i can just like see a choreo move to a certain part and mm-hmm. then like that's just like how i all like i always just like dance it in my head and that was one of those things that i could just like see her like wiggling being like oh me you oh me you yeah <laughs> and i just like i loved it and i always would get stuck in my head but my favorite part is the end which is the part that i played where she changes the lyrics and she says at first uh baby don't call me because i'm not lonely and then she says baby don't want me because you'll be lonely and it's like such a great song the whole song is just like i don't want you anymore stop calling me leave me alone i'm not thinking of you like don't waste your time and it's such a great attitude for a breakup song that i love it and i hope yolan always feels that way yay good choice (laughs) good choice good choice my next song is by Purple Kiss and it is called Joa. I I am just an absolute sucker for John Mayer guitar and that's how this song starts. It sounds like something off where the where the light is and like it's just so simple. It's just that like very groovy guitar just like singing and a very little beat and then these girls are just like going off. Mm-hmm. And it's so fun to sing along to and that's always a good factor for me. I love a good car singing song. This is absolutely one of those. And yeah, I don't know. Every single time it came on, I was just like, oh, yes, Purple Kiss, yeah. sing to me. I love it. <laughs> well, we're going to keep the Purple Kiss love going because my next choice is Love is Dead by Purple Kiss. You know what I love, love, love is dead. You know what I love, love, love is dead. I'm going to get me back here to pack a pack of dinner in my head. Very different vibe to this song than your pick. Sure. This is off of their second release of this year, Geeky Land, um, which I think Nerdy was the title yeah, track mine was from of. the Mem, Mem, Mem. Mem, Mem. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I liked this album or this like second release of theirs a little bit more than their first one. Mm-hmm. Um, but this song in particular has like heavier rock elements to it. And um, it's like that sort of moodier K-pop mm-hmm. where it's like, you know, it's saying my love is dead. I can't feel anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's really fun and like driving and catchy. And there's something about like, as soon as I heard, there were a couple of tracks this year where that had this, like, like there was like a wood song and a Le Seraphim. And then like this one that had that like rock guitar driving through it that made like 13 year old me so fucking sure, happy sure, sure. that I was like, yeah, this song. Um, and I, it's really catchy and I like it and I like the little, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's great. 
<laughs> good choice. Good choice. <laughs> My next pick is from Girls' Generation's Forever One album, and the song is called Summer Night. <laughs> Um, it was very hard to pick a b-side off of this album for me because i loved it so much um but this one ended up winning after a literal coin flip <laughs> um but the song is very fun and i noticed that the writer of this song wrote a lot of my favorite got seven songs oh, and a few Beckyun songs Ooh. like if that informs a little bit about this song but i just think that the syncopation of the lyrics in this song are super interesting because it has a very simple like kind of like hand clappy like beat and there's that weird like wah, 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 like sound happening mm -hmm. in the background but then what they sing over it is so much more complicated than yeah. like what the rest of the song is doing and i think that the Tay Tiso girls in the first verse, like, oh my God, they just fucking kill it with all of these little beautiful runs and stuff. And like, I don't know, the vibe of this song is just so fun. And it's about like cracking a beer on a summer night. And it like really gives that, that feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Great choice. It was also difficult for me to pick a B-side off of this album. But I knew that I had to have this album on my list because it was such a huge part of my year. So my next pick is also off of this album and it is Closer. This is just a phenomenal disco yep. from start to finish, plain and simple. Um, everything about it is wonderful. I love all the little layered voices and the like tiny little moments of the like, get, get, get closer. And like uh -huh. all the, the way that everything just like fits in and layers together is so like bubbly and nice and fresh. And I, I love this song. This song is like a cool breeze on a hot summer day. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Great choice. Great choice. Okay. It is time for my Stacy pick and I choose the actual title of this album. It wasn't the promoted single, but I chose Young Love. My love so young. Black Eyed Pill song never, ever, ever lets me down. <laughs> this was one of the three songs they wrote on this album. And it's so good. Um, this, I think this gets my Sing in the Car award for the mm. year. This is so fun to belt in the car. It's unbelievable. Um, I just love their, they're just, they're singers, man. Like, I love <laughs> Stacey. I, they're so good. They are so good. And this song, like, makes me want to hang out of a car, like, in that wallflower mm, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we Books are infinite wallflower. part. Yeah. This song is infinite. Like, it yes. just makes, like, I don't know. There's something about it. I feel like moonlit night, just, like, leaning out of a car. Like, yeah, the girls like, in the La Seraphim video roof, or whatever. Yeah. Like, oh, baby, I'm sorry for my young love. Yeah. Like, Oh my God. It's so good. The vibes are fucking immaculate and like, it's so powerful and it makes me feel things and it's just really good. Yeah, it is really good. <laughs> Stacy's really good. They're really good. <laughs> also really good. My next pick is Basics by Twice. Tonight. So I'm gonna call my friend, I'll take my makeup. I'm sleeker tonight. Okay. is just like one of the bounciest catchiest rejection songs I've ever heard uh -huh. and I love it uh I think that this I mean honestly it I wouldn't be my current self if I didn't put a twice song on this, sure. this, on this list I had to have them somewhere <laughs> um and this song really made me laugh like the first time I heard it because that 
syncopated. I love twice always does such fun things with their syncopation and with their rhythm. And I love the line of, so I'm gonna go home. Or you're like, so I'm gonna take a, what is it? I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, I'm go gonna home call my friend. Uh, I'm gonna call my I'm friend. Call my friend up, take off my, my makeup. makeup. I'm, I'm gonna sleep good tonight. tonight. Okay. okay. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and I, I love it because like the whole song is like, you want to go there, but not tonight. It's like, I'm not fucking you tonight. So go home. I'm going to go home, call up my friend, take off my makeup and go to bed early. Okay. Mm-hmm. Bye. <laughs> like, I'm going to take us like, we're going to take it slow. See you later, boy. Mm-hmm. And I love that. I think that's so funny and it's just so catchy and like, put yourself first ladies, like do it. I love it. I love twice. Absolutely. I love <laughs> that you picked this one. I wanted to pick this one, but it was on yours. So I was like, good. Now I don't have to, I can leave room. <laughs> um, I love the song too. And this is not a misheard lyric. It's more an imagined lyric, but every time I hear this song, what I want to sing because it would fit is I want to want to want to take you to my basement <laughs> Cause I don't know, like I don't know the first time they I heard it and they started to say bay I was like are they gonna say basement like is this about putting a boy in a basement yeah so lock you in the basement because we're not fucking tonight you're not sleeping in my room you basement. can sleep in the basement <laughs> great choice great choice <sighs> All right, my next choice is from Taeyeon's I Envy You album, and the song is called Toddler. <laughs> So this has a hilarious title, I think, because the <laughs> Korean title is Adult Child, mm. because the song like starts out with like, I used to believe in Santa Claus, and just it's about like trying to make peace with the fact that your young self is still inside of you mm. and you are a grown up now and like what does that mean and do I need my child like innocence thing still or like what do I still even like how do I get the magic of being mm. a child back I guess which was the same topic as my favorite oh my girl song from Aww. this episode last year so I don't know I guess it's a sentiment of us ladies in our 30s but anyway <laughs> Love this song. The bass is just, ooh, that bass. Like, that's the main, Mm -hmm. I think the main highlight of the song is that it has just, like, such good funky bass and like the first time i heard it it was like i assumed oh this song must be about like stomping all over a man or like something (laughs) very like "Mm, tough empowering but like no it's like a it's like a wistful like wondering about what it means to be a grown-up song um which doesn't i don't think like fits the vibe of the song so well but i love the vibe of the song and i think it's great so i had to include this this was one of my absolute most listened to nice important albums of the year yeah and i'm glad something off of this album made it onto the list because i felt like it needed it needed its time Mm -hmm. and its recognition (laughs) my next pick is dead man running by soul I love I mean I was so happy that Sulky like came out with something yeah. solo and she of course brought the sort of like danger element <laughs> to her like title track and it kind of like dripped through this whole EP. Um and I liked a lot of the songs off of this EP but this one I think really stood out to me because of the like crunchiness of it like it has that sort of like it's obviously not like a lo-fi like production, but it kind of sounds like it feels one. kind of similar to um, Changmin Devil song. Mm, like yes, it's yes, got yes. that like blah, yeah, like and it has that a... kind of like there's like a crackliness in her mm. vocals um, that I really enjoy. But I love the sound of Solgi's voice. Like she has a really like another sort of like round quality to it. But this song actually it doesn't sound like this song, but it always reminded me of the ending theme song to cowboy bebop that okay, like yeah, yeah, yeah. The blues yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and i would just like this is one of the this was one of my favorite like belt in the car like Dead! i loved it it was so good and i would just like scream it at the top of my lungs and like wind in my hair like you better run and it was great um so yeah that's my pick great choice great choice <laughs> All right, my second to last pick is Da Da Di by Treasure. Mm-hmm. 
melody, melody, yeah. I talked about this song a ton when it came out, like because the soft acoustic guitar and boy vocals are a weakness of mine. <laughs> so it got me and I listened to it so many times. And this is the like original B-side version of the song that came out with the album. And then later they remixed this into like a Joe Bros kind of rock mm. version and mm. shot a whole music video and like did a different version of Daradi. But I prefer this one, the original one, because it's simple and it's good. Nice. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> My next pick is called Zoom by Red Velvet. <laughs> liked this release of red velvets um the title track was birthday it, like just came out last month I think. yeah i'm glad you got something on here because i didn't have enough time to spend with this album to like fair get enough any of it on, I, so i'm I, glad you yeah. did I, well i really was like excited by birthday because to me it felt like a classic red velvet like coming song home. Like, <laughs> yes it was like dumb dumb russian roulette like it took me back to the original red velvet and i was like and that kind of feeling i thought felt i felt it through the whole album mm -hmm. i was like this is a red velvet release um and i love i mean i also had celebrate on my short list because that's their like croony song mm -hmm. and i love i mean red velvet is just such beautiful singers that like them singing a beautiful ballad about celebrating your birthday is like oh yes and there's like a great like sort of like when whitney wendy houston wendy there's a wendy houston, houston vibe to it of like the way that they say they sing i can't remember the tune of how they do it but the way that they they sing like it's your birthday so like oh it's your birthday or whatever and it's just like yeah it's my birthday um but I picked zoom instead because it was more unique and red velvet of course makes like very strange unique sounding k-pop songs for better or worse mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes they really miss the mark um but I really really liked this one I like the first time I listened to the the EP all the way through like this one caught my ear immediately because I was like oh this is groovy and funky and I love the little like zoom 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 and at the end like oh Wendy just goes off and like the high notes are so beautiful and the way it all piles together it's just like mm, yes it feels very satisfying Yes, good. Mm. I'm glad you got Red Velvet on here because I almost had Bombaleo from the earlier mm, album from yes. this year and it had to get cut. But I also I also had Bombaleo on my mm. short list as well. It's good. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my final B side pick of twenty twenty two goes to Done by WJSN. I'm so glad you picked this. Done. Um, so I think that this song should have been the title over last sequence, mm -hmm. but what do I know? <laughs> it's just so much, it's just so much more interesting and unique than last sequence. Like last sequence is fine. It's mm -hmm. like a fine WJSM yeah, yeah, yeah. song, but like this song is something totally. fucking special. And that like really dropped out like runway club H&M music, yes. like beat is something that we don't get very often. And I also just like really love the message of this song mm -hmm. like a breakup song that has no like room for anything mm -hmm. at like no room for consolation or, or whatever sadness it's uh, it's a self-empower i the line i love myself i, I love, love my, my body. body like yeah go fuck yourself whoever made actually feel like this to write this song i hope you feel like dirt uh yes i agree i love this song i was really really happy that you put it on there because this was i i took it off and i it hurt it hurt to do it yes but i just i like i really love the message of it the lyrics are so good there's even a part where they say like you've made me feel small like i won't mm. let you make me feel small and the like echo in the chorus after i love my body i love myself i love my body it says don't touch my mind <gasps> You won't even touch my mind. Oh. Like we, cause I said I'm done. Yeah. I said I'm mm -hmm. done. Yeah. I love it. I oh, love it's it. so Honestly, freaking good. Honestly too, like that, <laughs> the, the message of that song, like you made me feel small. Like it could be about anyone. Like it could be about Starship. It could be about yeah. Queendom. It could be about like, you know, there's so many, it, 
it's I love a song that sounds like a love song, whether it's a breakup or a romantic song, like, but could easily be applied to like, actually, this is about the way that like my CEO made me feel, or like, actually, this is about the struggles I have on the music shows, or right. like, or this is about or the comments fans online or, or people yeah, saying exactly. stuff about like, I love myself and I love yeah, my yeah, body. Yeah. So like, like don't up. talk to me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you won't touch my mind. Mm-hmm. I won't let you. I said I'm done. I said I'm done. Exactly, exactly. All right, my next song actually has, I think, kind of a similar vibe. Oh, good. I love it. And it's called Zip by Boa. I was reading the lyrics because I had to know like what yeah, it was yeah. all about. Um, and it is a similar vibe. It's like, even if I rewind, your words broke all my expectations. An obvious game you snatched. You don't even have the sincerity. Like, I can't believe the ridiculous words. Zip it. Um, and I, this is from Boa's like most recent Very release. It came out well. like, yeah, just a couple weeks ago. Um, and I really did enjoy this album. I, I don't love the title track. I'm not going to lie. It's Agreed. like, it's very like, it has just like that sort of like Espa noisiness that I don't think Boa needs. And like, I, whatever, like do the thing that all the kids are doing these days, like make whatever music you want. But the B sides off of this album are like perfect Boa songs as she, all of her albums are filled with. And I struggled between this one and one called After Midnight, but in a similar way to Red Velvet, where I was like, Zoom is groovy and funky and Celebrate is like a slow ballad. It was the same vibe, like Zip is super funky. And then After Midnight is like a beautiful, like soft, like has a whistle in it. And like, it's really lovely. Mm -hmm. And I do love After Midnight, but I ultimately picked Zip because again, I think it's a song that I don't hear very often in K-pop, like yeah. that guitar, that guitar, that guitar is in going it, so it's hard going and so hard. Crazy. There's so much interesting shit yeah. happening in the background yes. of that song. That is why I had to pick this song because so much is going on in it. And like, even in her vocals, she does so many different things in every like verse and pre-chorus and like bridge. Like it's all very different and kind of in a different part of her voice. But the guitar in it immediately made me think of that center stage scene where they go to the jazz class and they oh like my God, do and the they dance. To and they and Red do, Hot Chili yes, Peppers. And they do the like, and the, the, that like, it makes me want to like kick, 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 kick. Yes. And I love it. <laughs> I, know I love exactly it. exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. It's so good. It's so good. And like, I don't know. I just, I love boa and the she always makes really great albums but she also plays with genres in a way that i think only like a seasoned professional can and i love when she tries new things and i don't think i've ever i've never i can think of a couple other boa songs that are kind of like grittier more rock heavy but not in this kind of like badass like kick you in the face kind of like zip it sort of way there's a real like anger and toughness about this whole boa album like the concept seemed to be like boa's pissed now yeah totally and she like (laughs) brings it in her voice like she does not care about sounding pretty in this album and she is a really distinct voice too it's like very nasal i wouldn't necessarily i like pretty is not really a word i would use to describe boa's voice in general just because i think it's very unique Mm -hmm. and like it's very nice but it's not like a soft beauty no it's a ve- she voice. has a very specific voice. yeah very yeah. specific kind of like madonna like has that right. very specific style of singing um but she doesn't care about making her voice soft and nice in this album and i think that's really fun um and i just love seeing like i love seeing her experiment and do do different things Yay. So those are our 30 best b-sides from 2022. We did it. Amazing. We cobbled them. It hurt but it happened. It hurt, but it happened. But I'm happy with this list. I think it's a really good list. Mm-hmm. And I think we made good choices. And we found a way to, I think, really represent what we were listening to this year. And there's a lot of like, there's a lot of baby girl groups mm-hmm. on here. And so that just like makes me happy and excited to see because it's people that we can, you know, root for and pay attention yeah, to keep and an they'll keep bringing us good stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it's also so fun to like freaking have two girls generation songs on yes. this list. Like they like we got a lot we got a lot of exciting stuff this year. There's still so much to talk about and award and praise and gush over, but these were just the B-sides. 
Check, yeah. check that off the list. Check. And I love that between the two of us, I think we were able to create a very comprehensive list of all the artists that were like at the top mm-hmm. of my rotation throughout the year. Like even the ones that like I didn't pick, like you have them on your list. So like it's a good, it's a good little pie slide. Yeah, yeah. Snapshot of like all the things that we had on in the background this year. Yeah, totally. Totally. All right. And with that, we'll be right back with our random game. All right, we are back, and the random number generator kept up the tradition of being extra, extra creepy during these episodes. Yay, and, thank you, number generator. And it pulled for us Rocket Punch. Yay, my new favorite girl group. I'm so excited. <laughs> Rocket Punch is a six member group from Woolim Entertainment. They debuted in 2019 with an EP Pink Punch and the title track uh, Beam Bam Bum. Um, and a few of their members were introduced to the public before they debuted. One of their members, Jury, was in that uh Japanese girl group AKB48. Oh, one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then she and two of the other members went on Produce 48 before they debuted. Um, but Rocket Punch is Woolim Entertainment's second girl group since Lovelies. So they don't have a lot of girl groups under their name. Um, but uh, Rocket Punch is still going strong. Since debut, they have released... Four Korean EPs and two Japanese EPs. They also have a Japanese uh, studio album that they released. And all four of their Korean releases charted in the top 10. Um, So they are like making waves and at least getting some attention, which is good. Um, And their most recent EP, Yellow Punch, was one of my favorites. Yep. It's super good. So their most popular music video is still their debut music video, Bim Bam Bom. And if you'd like to watch it with us, you can pull it up, Rocket Punch, Bim Bam Bom, and we'll all watch it together. You just got to press play when I say go. Three, two, one, go. Woo them. <laughs> Okay, we've got a fake street with like a neon diner that says Rocket Punch. Full sequin outfits on everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, punch. Rocket Punch. Oh, and now we're inside of a, what is this, a movie, th- like a retro movie theater or something? It says a It looks like the, the Save by the Bell diner with yeah. those frosted glassy pieces. Okay, now we're walking through a hallway turning around when it's our turn to sing (laughs) we're going through so many different rooms in this little shopping complex everything is just like pearl aqua neon and like purple the bisexual lighting this all this turquoise and pink is the only neon color (laughs) it creates such good Vibes. Yeah, and it like shines in their hair so nicely. Oh, I remember this song. So we have like two choreography sets, one inside the diner with like more colorful outfits, and then one outside with just black and white outfits. The outfits are very interesting because they seem to be mostly like athleisure or mm-hmm. jerseys but they have been like modified and made into dresses or into crop tops yeah or, like yeah like this girl's skirt looks like windbreaker material but it's a skirt yeah and that girl's wearing boxing shorts mm-hmm. back there and like yeah yes you're right those are boxing shorts they have a lot of outfits in this what a cheetah <laughs> a very poorly animated C- cheetah CGI cheetah <laughs> And these like very fake looking popsicles. <laughs> and the cheetah has made eye contact. No, shh. And they tell him to shush. <laughs> I mean, cheetahs don't roar. They just like squeak. Have you ever heard a cheetah squeak? It's no, the are they like, ca- like little cats? Yeah, like, they just go. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, now they're like hand gunning. <laughs> and shooting <laughs> like, donuts and popsicles yeah. out of their fingers. But they're, like, destroying the signs. And it's all just turning into candy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, now it's a candy mountain. They're standing on top of it. 
one by one. Glitching. <laughs> That's a weird shirt. She is a Boston Red Sox jersey that is glitter. Yeah, these yeah, these are Where did that come from? Wait, it's a pearl aqua sequined Boston Red Sox crop top. Yep. What on earth? It might be from, because there's a weird, I'm sure we've talked about this before, but there's this weird thing in Korea where a bunch of like American brands that you would not associate with clothing like CNN, the news channel, or MLB, or what's another one, National Geographic, where those are clothing stores in Korea, not like TV channels. And they, it's like they sell the brand of CNN and then there are CNN clothes. And anyway, the MLB store sells so much great stuff that has all the MLB, all the Major League Baseball logos, but the colors are almost never the colors of those teams. They are wow. like fashion colors with the logos it's like they just sell the rights to the logos and then they do whatever they want with them interesting the cnn one blows my mind every time i get an ad for it i'm like that's that's their cnn clothes and also like (laughs) that that feels unethical as a journalist (laughs) that 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 feels wrong (laughs) but whatever uh anyway Anyway, rocket punch Punch, (laughs) we love them um i would say that they're this debut feels very standard k-pop and i remember when we got them in the girl group uh support girl groups episode when they debuted like they didn't really stand that much out to me because it does feel very like standard but their sound has evolved and like they make like every new release that they come out with i think gets better and better and like their most recent release uh was just a single called flash and it's fucking great like mm-hmm. oh my god it's so good one of my favorite songs of the year spoiler alert um i had to cut really beep beep i had to cut flash. moon prism Ugh. and beep beep both beep, of those beep. that song is yeah so fun. it's so good it's so i had I know, five I did it, did rocket it, did punch <laughs> songs on my list <laughs> It was very difficult to choose. It was very difficult. I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> um, all right. That's it for this week. I'm saying, as always, that our recommendation is these 30 songs. Absolutely. Get into them. You know what my recommendation is? I recommend that you go to moment.co slash AMA K-pop and get your tickets now for our live birthday event on January 19th, 2023 at 6 p.m. PST. VOD available for one week after the day of airing. Get your tickets now. They'll go uh, up in price starting tomorrow. So get on it. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, we can be found at AMA K-pop Pod on Twitter and Instagram, AMA K-pop Pod at gmail.com for emails, 181-AMA-K-POP-5. Send us a text. Leave us a voicemail. P.O. Box 26096, Los Angeles, California, 90026 for regular old mail. Patreon.com slash AMA K-pop Pod. Get bonus episodes. Get coupons to things like live shows. All yes. kinds of great stuff happens when you're a patron. Get exclusive access to a private submission list for our new series k-pop the cork so you have a higher chance of getting your submission read on the show because we're pulling from a smaller pool of submissions and those submissions are due this week yes so get thursday in. december 15th we will be filming this weekend so stay tuned for our brand new series it coming to be. a youtube near you it should be fun and you can find our youtube and our spotify where we'll have all these songs on a playlist and our youtube where we make playlists for episodes that have a lot of videos in them linktree slash ama kpop will take you there and one more time moment.co slash ama kpop get your tickets come to our live birthday party it's gonna be so fun you guys really need to be there yes and we will have the the link will also be in our link tree too so everywhere that you need to find it it will be there um get your tickets now and we'll see you there Yay. And um, later this week, probably tomorrow, I don't know, it depends on when I edit it, but bonus episode about Mino's solo debut. We have a lot to say, so look forward to that. And then next week, regular episode is Ask Me About K-Pop Awards. <gasps> Tough choices will need to be made yet again. Yet again. Yet again. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for sticking around. We love you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.
Jong Yan, you're our inspiration.